Welcome to the Statistic in DD YouTube channel. ggplot2 is the standard for creating visualizations in R and if you don't have a lot of experience or frankly even if you do it's sometimes hard to remember all the commands you need to build up your plot. So wouldn't it be nice to have a graphical interface that you can use to just click through and build up your plot um, just using the mouse, using a drag and drop functionality. Luckily such a tool exists it lives in the squiz package and the function to start it is called skc um, so you can use this command to start it up you can also use the more traditional approach just typing library squiz and then call the skc function or even more conveniently um, it also um, comes with an rstudio add-in so you can just uh, use this add-ins menu in rstudio and I have this entry here for squiz ggplot2 builder. So I use that and I get this window. So here I can select a data frame. I have a data frame with songs from the top five bands or artists in terms of number of songs um, in the top 100 for each year from 2000 to 2020. The data comes from the website chart2000.com that I encourage you to check out um, so we can have a look at these songs. Now in this menu I get an option to select variables. Here I only have 11 variables so I don't want to reduce that number further. I also get the option to convert variable types which I don't want to do here. So I can just move on by clicking on validate imported data and then I get to this convenient window and here I can just build up plots using this drag and drop interface. So the variable I'm most interested in today is indicative revenue. Um, so stands for the revenue that a song or album generates across the music chain. Um, it comes in units of 1000 US dollars and I say okay this is my dependent variable I put it on the y-axis and now there's nothing on the x-axis at this time so um, this quiz offers me a histogram. Um, just with this one mouse click I get my first chart. You see it's not the default ggplot colors. It's a nice blue um, so I could adjust this plot a little bit but I want to see how indicative revenue developed over time. So I use the year variable and place it on the x-axis and you see the chart type changes without me specifying this change and now we have a scatter plot. Um, the dots are a bit small so I go to the plot options um, menu and increase the size of the dots to 2.5 like this. And now it looks a bit nicer and now um, I said I have the top five artists or bands of this time period from 2000 to 2020 so let's distinguish by artist or band so I use the variable artist um, and map it to the color aesthetic and now the points are colored and you see I automatically get this legend as well and always I can inspect the R code that I need to build up this plot in ggplot2. So the R code is displayed here. Um, I can insert it to a script or I can copy it to the clipboard and I can also export the plot at any time, store it as a PNG or even in PowerPoint format. So a lot of customizations I could still do. I could add access labels and a plot title, a subtitle, caption and so on and the color label corresponds to the legend. So artist is with a spelled with a small a so I can change that to artist or band and you see the change takes effect immediately. The legend is um, labeled now as I wished. I have more plot options here. For example I could transform the axis which I'm not going to do here. Um, I can switch to a different color palette. So let's go to a qualitative um, scale and maybe use this dark too. Um, it takes effect immediately and here in the data menu I have a lot of nice options as well. I can filter the data interactively here very conveniently using sliders for example to limit the range of years that are displayed in the chart and for this categorical variable artist I can just remove artists by clicking here um, and add them back in so that's very convenient and I can even um, take a look at other variables and exclude an A values in other variables with one mouse click. So that's very convenient here as well. We can check back in the code 
and you see um, we get one nice tidyverse style chain and so it's not only ggplot code that is generated but we also get this filter command from the dplyr package and it's all chained together for one um, pipeline that gives me this chart. So I can use this code to manipulate it further. Um, I could also adjust the theme, I can do it here or I could do it in the R code, very convenient. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you find this useful for your own visualizations. If you struggle a bit um, to remember ggplot2 commands, um, you can use this ggplot2 builder from the Squiz package. Um, when you check at the console, console, you see listening on HTTP, so that's localhost. So um, the ggplot2 builder is a shiny app. So my local R session is now serving this app, so the R session is blocked as long as this window is open. Um, I can close this and then you see that the R session becomes available again and we can have a, a more detailed look into this function SKC um, and using it, um, calling it without the, um, without the parenthesis we get the R code. Um, I don't want to look into all this code but just highlight this run gadget function. So this is a special type of shiny app. It's a so-called shiny gadget. I think that shiny gadgets are a lesser known side of shiny. At the R Studio websites you can find a more detailed description. I'll put the link in the description below this video. Um, what gadgets are. You can even write your own gadgets and also make them available within R Studio as an add-in. So this package was written by Victor Perrier and Fanny Meyer. I hope you find it useful. All the best for your own data visualizations, for your R projects, for your exploratory data analysis or whatever you do in R. Um, yeah, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing the channel if you haven't already. All the best. See you next time. Ciao.